Okay, it would help if I actually have my sound on. I was speaking for about a minute there. <laughs> so good evening, everybody. Um, and I uh, would like to say thank you for joining us this evening. I know it's uh, really, really late in the evening. Um, so yeah, for giving up your time to join us is fantastic. Uh, what we would like to do this evening is just go through um, the uh, behaviour at Park House and Pride, which are two things that are new, slightly new, slightly not new, um, but definitely new within the primary school. Um, so what we are going to do this evening is uh, go through um, what you see on your screen. Uh, we're going through what we actually mean by behaviour at Park House, um, why we've made the changes that we've made. Um, we're going to go through what Pride is. And if you're in the secondary school, you may have actually, you might be, be familiar with Pride already. Um, and then what the changes are in the primary school that are really specific to the primary school. Um, I'm going through my slides and then what I will do is then go um, into um, a, a Q&A session at the end. So I'll give you an opportunity to ask any questions. OK, right. So let's get started. Now, many of you might be looking and thinking, oh gosh, why is Mrs Hilton going through behaviour? Because actually one of the main reasons um, why you chose Park House was because we're really fantastic in terms of our behaviour. Um, and it's very rare that we have to deal with any real, I suppose, bad behaviour within the school. Um, so, you know, it's definitely one of the reasons why you would have picked us and definitely one of the reasons that I would promote the school as having really, really good um, behaviour. Um, so the picture there of those children fighting is definitely not what happens at Park House. Um, but when we talk about behaviour, what we mean is um, the, the good and the bad, basically. And what we do at Park House is we really do focus on the good. We feel that that's the, that's the area that we need to focus on because actually that's the area that the children can flourish in. Um, at, but you still may ask the question, well, why? Why is it important for us to look at this? Um, and so we, we started to have a really, a really a good look at this. Um, and I, some of you may or may not have attended the session with um, uh, Mr. Smith. Um, and he went, went over this. It's Simon Sinek, loads of people look at it in all industries, but we definitely look at it within a school establishment. Um, and we always start with our why, which is identifying the purpose. Um, and that's something that we co continuously talk about within the school. Why are we doing this? Why are we looking at this? Um, I'm not doing it just because I'm new to the school and it's something that I fancy doing and giving myself a project. There's plenty of things to be doing, um, but it's definitely something that I know will have a huge impact um, within the actual school itself. Um, Behaviours have an impact on a lot of things within the school and if we go all the way back to what our mission, um, mission, the mission and vision of Park House is. It is about us developing confident, independent, resilient children that have a love of learning. Um, and behaviour has a huge impact on that in terms of, you know, the, the good, the good and the bad. OK, so. It's one of the things that I would I look at when going around the school all of the time, but it was definitely one of the things that I had as a plan to look at um, just as a new person coming into the school anyway. And what one of the things that I did find was actually it just solidified, solidified my opinion of the school, which was actually we've got really, really good behaviour. The children are uh, very, very infrequently, rarely disruptive. Um, they concentrate, they're engaged in their learning, um, yet they, they, they get on with it effectively. Um, but one, there were a couple of things that we did find, well, that I did find when looking around, um, and, and some of them were inconsistencies across, um, across the primary school. So teachers are doing things differently in each class. N none of them were, were bad things. It was just that it was inconsistent. One class was using different words to another class. One class was all roared in with different things. OK, um, and then one of the other things um, that I noticed was well, it, it wasn't that it wasn't happening and you'll see this in a minute in some of the surveys that were conducted, but actually it was, could we do it more? So could we praise good behaviour more? Um, and I suppose the reason for that is because the children have such good behaviour. What else are we doing in order to praise that? Because they are doing really, really, really well. And these behaviours are learned behaviours. They are not something that just come naturally to children. So actually we should be rewarding that. 
Um, and so I started thinking about it as something that we needed to look at. And then um, what I did was I actually spoke to Mrs Brewster, who's our head of PE, um, and she said it was something that she'd really like to look at as well, because obviously um, as a specialist teacher, you are in lots and lots of different classes. So if there is inconsistency, it's really difficult to keep up with what's going on with one class um, as to what's going on with another class. So she, she took it on um, as a project. Um, and so you would have had a survey come out to you in our weekly notices about the behaviour in the school. Um, and, and that was how Mrs Brewster started to investigate, basically. Um, and what Mrs Brewster did was she uh, sent a survey to uh, the parents. Um, she had a survey sent to the staff and she also had surveys sent to the children and she asked a number of questions. OK, um, and actually what you know, we noticed was, well, you can see the results here. Um, we, we looked at a variety of different areas, um, one being how well everyone felt that the um, school reinforced be the behaviour standards. So our actual behaviour policy, how well did was it seen as being reinforced? Um, now, parents were generally quite happy with it, actually. There wasn't a, a, a really big discrepancy there. Um, but as teachers, <laughs> we are our own worst critics. Um, and we were pretty much on the fence with the results here. We weren't saying that they were amazing. We weren't saying they were really poor. They were very neutral. Um, so uh, <laughs> we started to delve a little bit deeper and we started to look at look at it in more detail. Um, and then we started to, I suppose, really, really look at actually the, the good behaviour bit, because that was the bit that we all really like to, to consider and, and, and think about. And definitely from my perspective, because the behaviour was so good, I really wanted to think about how we were doing this. Um, and so we obviously um, took a snapshot snapshot shot of this um, and Mrs Brewster started analysing the data there. Um, but I, I would say that these were the results that concerned her and concerned us the most. OK, so ultimately the children um, felt that the, the staff rewarded good behaviour. Um, and, and that was fantastic because that's how the children felt. OK, um, but you as parents felt strongly that we didn't necessarily reward good behaviour or didn't do it enough. OK, um, or the other question we had to ask ourselves was, is it that we weren't doing it enough or was it that we weren't informing you as parents enough about the rewards that children were getting for their good behaviour? Um, so that was the question that we needed to look into and start to consider and think about. Um, and then what Mrs Brewster did then was, um, so she, she analysed all of that data and then she started looking at the verbatim comments. Um, she started, um, well, you can see it there, she started looking at um, how rewards were and th there was a vote there, would, would, the, would people have preferred certificates or dojo points or house points, etc. And it was kind of a, a high rate of certificates, a high rate of dojo points. Um, there were comments about staff needing to be on the same page. So that was, um, you know, reinforcing the consistency. Um, a better need for communication, which was also identified by parents. Um, I think the, the one in pink there was really clear. There was very little behavioural issues. I think the general behaviour in the pupils is outstanding. And absolutely, I completely agree with that in terms of, I suppose, the engaging in learning and, and doing what they were expected to do. Um, but again, it was here, the greater celebration of pupil success could improve. And that was something that we were all in real agreement on. Um, these no consequences for pupils with bad behaviour was actually, I suppose, um, one that was again inconsistent in terms of a comment because because of the inconsistency between the classes. One teacher would do one thing, another teacher would do something else, another teacher would do something else. So some classes would say, actually, they're really clear about what the consequences were if there was any bad behaviour, um, but other, others wouldn't. So we really started to look at, um, look at this. Um, and what happened was Mrs Brewster then started to identify some key themes. Um, one was consistency, one was rewards, one was communication. And then um, consistency between the classes within the primary school was something that we definitely needed to look at. But what we also needed to start looking at was um, the consistency between the secondary school too and preparing the children for secondary school. Because I think we prepared them quite well going through the school and then we needed to think about that transition into the secondary school too. So it was kind of another layer of things to think about. Um, and this is where then um, pride came into play um, because 
it was something that most definitely addressed all of the themes um, that I've just mentioned. Um, and it was something that was consistent. Was it, we had the ability to be consistent between the primary school and the secondary school by looking at pride because it was something that the secondary school already had anyway. Um, what was even better about it was um, the the language that's used and in terms of the meanings, and I'll go into them in more detail on the next slide. But what I will say is the language that's actually used here was really consistent with the language that we use in IPC, because in IPC we have um, uh, personal goals um, and within those personal goals, one, for example, is resilience um, and resilience is the same as perseverance. Um, so that they were really in line. So it was a natural thing to take on pride um, it, within the primary school as well. Um, and. I suppose we tried to make it friendly <laughs> uh, for the primary school, um, so we introduced um, some cubs. Um, so in PE, we have a mascot and our mascot's called Percy and Percy is a lion. So um, we had another think about, OK, well, how can we make this even more friendly for primary school? So we introduced introduced um, Percy's Pride. And so there you can see our cubs and Mrs Brewster was amazing and managed to get them all embroidered with them um, with the logo as well. Um, and I will explain in more detail how um, we're going to be using um, the cubs as a well, Percy's cubs as a reward. Um, what was I suppose the big question for all of us was actually this language can be quite challenging for the children in primary school because we're thinking about children from year six all the way down to the nursery. This isn't something that's just done in key stage one, key stage two or just particularly to the early years. So we had to make it friendly for all. Um, and perseverance is actually quite a challenging word. Um, and we had to consider how we were going to start introducing it to the children. Uh, so what we uh, did was we uh, decided that actually year five, because they are in a kind of a transition year preparing for year six when they start to take on leadership responsibility. Um, year five are a good year to kind of start piloting this. So year five have been chosen as the year group to create assemblies on each of these um, these five uh, learning behaviours basically. OK, so they are going to be doing assemblies to the whole school. And um, so today was actually our first assembly. So today was our assembly on perseverance um, and it was delivered to the whole school via a live. Um, well, it wasn't a live, it was pre-recorded, but it was delivered to the children live via a video um, and the children had had a really good assembly and they created two uh, assemblies, one for key stage one, so it was a bit, uh, the language was simpler, and then one for key stage two, which had a bit more challenge, challenging language and went into depth a little bit more. Um, and then what's happening with the children in early years is I'm going round to those uh, children with um, the P cub and I'll be explaining it in, a, in an even more friendly way. Um, so uh, what we then um, had to do then was actually just start understanding the language itself. So that was us as adults actually and that was the teachers as well. Um, so I'll just click through all five of them all at once and basically all of them um, have, uh, I suppose, a, a summary there of, of what it means. Um, but what was really important was, yes, it links to IPC, um, but it encouraged positive behaviour and it encouraged positive learning behaviours. Um, and this is really important to us because we actually don't have to deal with bad behaviour, like I've said, but actually we need to encourage um, learning behaviours and learning behaviours um, that the children um, can, I suppose, establish in school, but also practice in school as well. Um, so the perseverance is about being resilient, just keeping keep on going, even when it's challenging, even when it's difficult. Um, and we have loads of opportunities in school for this. You know, there are children that will give up if they're finding something really, really hard. And what we can say to them now is, look, actually, we know it's really, really difficult. It's meant to be really difficult, but actually think about how proud you're going to be in the end. You know, these these are things that we have to deal with as adults. Um, so so that was what one responsibility is, is pretty obvious. They're taking responsibility. But this is also for their learning, their attitude, their progress and their behaviour. So them taking that responsibility, not blaming it on someone else, not saying, oh, my mum didn't do this or my dad didn't do this or my maid didn't do this or, you know, my friend did this. It's about them taking responsibility for themselves. 
Um, and then independence. I mean, you know, COVID has brought about a, an excellent opportunity for developing independence in our um, in our children. Um, you know, they're having to do a lot more on their own and especially with home learning. Um, and that independence is also about not just getting the tasks done, but actually doing it to a high level and taking pride in their work as well and being responsible for that. Um, and then the area of dedication um, that, you know, it, it says it there, but it is just knowing that it requires, you know, determination and an effort and, you know, commitment to actually being successful. You need to keep going at it and, and dedicating yourself to it and then and then it will be successful. Um, and then that engagement, which I talk about and actually our children are pretty engaged in learning. Like, you know, you, we, we I can't actually question that it's something that comes naturally to them because they enjoy learning, which is fantastic. Um, but again, it then pulls in all of the other um, four areas there when we link that to engagement. Engagement. So, like I said before, these are learning behaviours, but these are skills that children need for life. OK, and that's really, really important. It's not just about us saying, oh, you know, we're just we're just going to teach them these things just because they're, they're fancy words and they look great. It's not. These are skills we need for life. And I know, you know, as an adult, how much I have to, you know, dedicate myself to things or, you know, obviously take responsibility. But at the same time, that resilience that we all have to build. So that perseverance and you keep going and, you know, you're having a hard day and it's and, and especially during these times, um, you know, keep, that that's one of the areas that I think that, you know, is being, I suppose, promoted and talked about the most at the moment. Um, and so, yes, we've introduced pride or we are introducing pride into the primary school, um, but there are um, a number of changes that we made based on those surveys, based on the conversations and based on what we had observed around the school. Um, so the key things there are um, we've actually changed the behaviour policy overall now. Um, the reason for that is to ensure that we were, you know, looking at the themes that Mrs Brewster ident identified and making sure that we were addressing that. So having a policy in place means that there's consistency. So that will be shared with parents on the website as well so that it can be looked at by the parents um, and they know that you guys know actually what what's going on in school and, and how things are being looked at in terms of behaviour. Um, we have changed our reward systems and I'm going to go into more detail about that in a moment. Um, and um, we have also looked at different uh, san sanctions or qu consequences if there is bad behaviour. So like I've said, it is very rare, but we do believe in fairness and consistency. And if there is a situation where a child has, had, has, has made the wrong choices, it's important that they understand that if they've made the wrong choice and their friend in another class has made the wrong choice, they're going to be treated in exactly the same way. Uh, so we felt that that was really, really, really important to ensure that there was fairness and clarity. And then clarity for parents to understand that as well. You know, I, I wouldn't want a parent messaging me and saying, well, actually, you know, my son's friend in his other class had done this and actually this happened, but actually in, this happened to my son. Um, so that fairness and clarity is really important. Um, and so we um, also had a huge change. Well, it's not a huge change, but it was a, a more of a consistent change when it came to house points and dojos. Um, so like I said, I'll go into that in more detail in a moment. Uh, so. One of the things that we um, are doing to ensure um, that everyone is kind of doing the same thing is um, by having behaviour charts. So this is a, a big change. Now, this is just an, like one example. This is just the key stage one um, example of what it may look like. It's not the final product. Um, so the children will all and this will be from um, EYFS this is from nursery, reception, year one, year two, all the way through to year six, will all start on the green. So the green might be represented in a different year group in a different way. That hence I've tried to put, use this one to kind of show you what it may look like. So um, the rainbow will be what is visible in the classroom for most probably children in early years. They're making final decisions on this now. But again, consistency. So if one class in reception do it, all of the classes in reception are going to use the same thing. So if they all decide to use the rainbow with the clouds, then that they're all going to do that. Um, so they're either going to have the rainbows with the clouds um, or um, they will have I the, the, the next one along will be the smiley faces. We've already decided that actually we won't actually have all the faces um, in the, the amber and yellow. We will actually make those 
linked to the actual colour that it might represent. So you've got um, a green, it'll be a green face, um, a yellow face, an amber face or a red face. Um, so it's, uh, it's highly likely that year six, for example, would just have the words. So that gives you an example of what might be in the classroom. So not all of them will be there. It will just be um, one of, of them. Um, or two of them. So year three might decide actually they have the smiley face and the words to start preparing them for moving on into year four, five and six. Um, and then the gold star um, is where children will be if they are going above and beyond consistently following the rules, etc. Um, and it's really important for you to know this because it will explain some of the um, elements of the uh, rewards that I'll go into in a moment. Um, but just for your knowledge, what will happen is the children come in every day and every child starts on the green. Um, so every child starts on the green um, and that's the, it's a happy place to be. That's fantastic. You're doing well. They can, um, you know, if, if, you know, they are talking too much in class, um, they will get two verbal warnings and every teacher is going to be doing exactly the same thing. So they're going to be having a conversation with the children. Look, you're, you're, you're speaking out too loudly, you're shouting out, whatever it might be you know, you need to improve that. And they will get two chances. And if after two chances they are still doing that, it, they would move then to the yellow. And then that's their visual prompt of, look, this is what's happening here. You're not behaving in an appropriate way. You know, it needs to improve. Now, you know, at Parkhouse, in all fairness, all of the children will be on green. Most of the children will end up being moved to the gold star because this is them um, going above and beyond, following the class rules and, and doing that consistently as well. Um, and it might be the odd child goes to yellow and they can move backwards and forwards through um, through this. Now, um, this allows us to ensure that there is consistency and fairness across the classes and between the subject specialists as well, because everybody is using exactly the same uh, the same process. Um, and as you can see here, what you can see is there's a consequences ladder. OK, so we've introduced this too. Now, this isn't. Um, this is a, a real visual kind of uh, focal point. It won't necessarily be on display in the class, the classrooms as such, because actually they've got the pictures, which is more child friendly. But it's um, there for us to all acknowledge what the what the uh, the steps are in a in a kind of like summarized um, way. Um, so there, you've got that consequences ladder. Obviously, number two is where everybody is. You can move to what number one because actually that's the gold star, um, and then you've got there. Verbal warning if they'd move to the uh, the yellow. Um, if they're moving to amber, it becomes more serious and they have to go and see the year leader. And then um, if it moved to a red, that's when it comes to me, it, go, it comes to Mrs. Stewart and actually it becomes more serious. And we're having discussions with you about it as well. Um, so that's really, really important that you're aware of that. Um, this ensures that we're clear about expectations. Most importantly, it's something that's visual um, and the children can understand it, which is the most important thing here as well. Um, so we try to keep it as simple as we possibly can. Now, that's kind of, I suppose, the more like, I suppose, going into sanctions and consequences, the more negative side. Um, the rewards is the bit that we really wanted to focus on. And this is how we actually made sure that it was consistent as well across the school, but with secondary, because they do something Think very very similar um they have is is slightly different in terms of you know the, the steps but actually it, it looks pretty similar um it's just that we we're just doing it in maybe a different order potentially um it also does address some of the communication um issues um so this is where we start looking at sending emails home to you as parents so you're aware of it as well um and so uh, what we have here is we have um, uh, the Parkhouse English School, you can see it down the side there, and we've got the Pride Recognition, so these are some of the rewards we have in our school. We've got Pride Recognition, we've got um, House Points and Dojo Points, we have Emails Home and we have School Certificates. So these are all of the rewards that we will now be doing within the school um, and they will be done in a consistent and fair way. Um, so what will happen is we will start to uh, I'll go into more detail actually about the house points and how that will look um, but what will happen is the children getting a pride award um, will I suppose receive it in different ways um, I go into more detail actually on the second slide here so 
it, you've seen the steps that the children go on. So obviously we've said everybody starts on a green. However, if the children are obviously going above and beyond, that the children can go to the gold star. OK, at the end of the gold, um, at, the at the end of the day, every child will receive two house points, dojo points. So I'll, I'll summarise that for you now. Um, all of the children were really used to having dojo points. It's really visual for us in the classroom as well, because basically they have um, they have these little monster pictures and they all represent themselves. And the teacher it's really easy for the teacher to collect them because they just say, right, you've got two dojo points. Bang, bang, bang on their on their little monster face and it gives them the two dojo points. And if they've got another dojo point, it adds it on. So it's it's really visual. It's easy. The children can see it rather than go and get a card, write your number, write, write it in or colour it in or whatever, because that's what the secondary school do. And that's absolutely fantastic. But guaranteed we would lose cards and children would be upset. Um, it's time consuming for us in primary school. So we've stuck with saying dojo points are just converted into house points. So anytime I'm talking about dojo points, they are actually house points as well. They, they, they mean exactly the same thing for us. OK, so at the end of the day, they will get their two dojo points to them. OK, and then their name goes into a big box. And then on a Thursday at the end of the week, the teacher will pull out two names and those children will get extra dojo points. What will happen as well every half term is this. If the children get 40 house points and dojo points, an email will go home to you saying, your child's been amazing, they've got 40 um, house points, etc, etc, etc. If they get to 60 house points um, or dojo points, they get a school certificate and it says exp explanatory there, 75 they get the Head Teachers Pride Award. OK, so it's um, it's a nicer way for, um, or it's, I suppose it's more rewards because they're getting these on top of their normal star of the week that they would normally be getting as well anyway. OK, um, what happens is the house points are collected at the end of every um, every week and they're given to Mrs. Cor Miss Cortez in the office and then she records it on a house point chart. Um, they're going to actually be collected by our house captains um, because we want to give them extra responsibility as well. So the house captains are in year six, so they'll go around collecting them and then they'll be giving them to Miss Cortez and they'll be um, there. So, um, what we are doing is then supporting the fact that parents have said the communication possibly isn't clear and then that way um, you're actually going to be better informed in terms of what's going on with your children and the rewards that they're actually getting in school as well. Um, and then the other, other element of that is I've said that they're obviously converted into house points um, and, and this is where there has also been a change and a really welcomed one from the children actually because um, again, there was a bit of an inconsistency between secondary school and primary school here. The colours were, we still used the blue, um, yellow, red and green, but in the primary school we had names of trees um, and in the secondary school they had big cats. Um, so when I came in I was like, well, these are trees that actually aren't even in Qatar. So the children aren't, aren't even aware of potentially what a birch or a willow or whatever tree they are. So it, it's something that wasn't familiar to them. Um, and actually why this, have the secondary school got big cats, which the primary school would be really into. Um, so that was a really easy change for us actually. Um, so, we, so we just automatically changed, spoke to a few children and the teachers and then changed them over and just said, right, actually that makes sense. Um, so the children were really excited about that. One of the other things was they actually didn't know their houses and they weren't aware of their houses except for sports days because that was the only day we really used houses within the primary school. Um, and so that's that's been another significant change for them because um, they now know what house they're in. Um, and we will be doing more and more and pick this up. It's obviously we're introducing it slowly because we don't want to confuse them. Um, so they now know what house they're in and what colour it links to. So um, as you can see on that display there, leopards are blue, panther are yellow, tiger are red, jaguar are green. OK, um, and we have to introduce this to the children slowly. So the, the picture you can see on the uh, presentation now is actually a display board in one of the year three classes currently. So uh, one of our teaching assistants has created this display board in preparation. So the children um, had an assembly from me last week where I started to um, introduce it and said, this is what pride is and we've changed over houses and this is what the houses are. During the week, um, they have then been told what house they're in. And then, like I said today, 
today and tomorrow, depending on whether the A or B group, um, they, we have started looking at pride and perseverance was the first one that we've introduced this week. And so now they're starting to see those visual aids um, start to take place um, in their classes as well. So this is one of them, for example. Um, like I said, the change was really, really welcome from the children. We're now in line with what was go what's going on in the secondary. Um, we have got um, more to do in terms of what's happening. But in terms of the house points, um, we they're collecting these house points every term, at, at, at every half term. At the end of each term, the house that has the most house points. So they are now going to be able to work collectively across the school as well, because the house that has the most house points will then be awarded with, I have a big, massive cup um, and th th that house will get it. So if Tigers won, I put some red ribbons on, on the cup and it goes up on display in our corridor and the Tigers know that they have won the cup for that term and then it will go through um, as well. What will also happen at the end of the academic year is um, we will put all of the points together, those from secondary and those from primary, and then we will have a collective, wow, this is what's um, happened. Uh, this is um, the overall winners of the houses. Uh, the other thing that we're looking at is um, I don't some of the children may or may not have come home and started to speak about um, leadership within the school. And we've obviously introduced the student leaders within this, um, the year sixes. Um, We've in introduced now house captains, which we didn't have before because obviously we didn't have the houses. So we've got the house captains being introduced um, and then there will be school council starting off in each class as well. And then what will happen is um, we will start organising house events. Now it's going to be relatively restricted this year, but the house events are not going to just link to sport, which is what has happened previously um, in the primary school. In the secondary school, they did other events as well. But in the primary school, we only had them really linking to sport and sports day. So Mrs Brewster and her team were you know busy planning sports day and, and and putting lots and lots of effort into that and what it means now is we can actually have events going on throughout the school year where the children um, work as a team across the school so there are leopards in nursery and reception in year one year two etc and we can now well we can't mix our bubbles but we can do events saying right all of Leopards in year four, they're going to be doing this. All of Panthers in year five, they're going to be doing this, etc. So we can have things like spelling bees and reading competitions and maths competitions and all of those kinds of things using the houses. So it's not just linked to linked to sport. And that's what we've also considered as well when we've also selected the um, the house captains. Um, so yeah, that's that's what's happening there. Um, and yeah, I've, I know I've spoken quite quickly, actually, but that's, yeah, some of the, I suppose, the main changes um, within the school in relation to rewards, um, informing you as parents um, and uh, ensuring that there's consistency um, and ensuring that the children are really aware as well and keeping re things really visual for them so they have a clear understanding of what's going on. Um, so we hope that it's going to be a positive change. Um, so we've taken in what you've said from these surveys. What will happen now is um, we're obviously implementing and starting to put these things in place. Um, we will trial them out for a bit. If things are not working, we will make changes. Um, and, you know, as we start to believe that they are working, we'll then start doing a review at the end. Um, and I don't know how long that's going to be. It will just be dependent on how long it takes for us to start embedding things. Um, and then we'll do um, more surveys at the end to just check how things are going. Um, and the same thing with staff, with parents and with the children as well. So, uh, yeah, like I said, you know, that was a lot to take it. <laughs> um, and so what um, I will do now is you may or may not have questions and that's absolutely fine, but I will give you an opportunity now to ask any questions. So I there is a Q&A box and I'm wondering if you can actually see that on your screens. I'm just kind of logged in myself as a participant. <laughs> um, and I would like you to just if there are any questions, put them in the Q&A. Yes, and then I can go into it and then I can, I don't know if it's actually open, or put them in the chats, either or. So chats or Q&A, um, if there are any questions, and I'll hang on and I'll respond to them as we can. Let me check if that's working. So, hi, Mrs Hilton here. Okay, so that has just gone into the chats. So if you have any questions, you can put them in there. Oh, okay. 
Okay, um, so yeah, so I've put something into the chats there myself. Um, so if you do have any questions, put them in there. If you don't have any questions, don't worry. If it's something quite personal to your child and you prefer not to do that and you prefer to email me, that's absolutely fine as well. Or you can email into the school again, absolutely fine as well. Um, so I will hold up there. Um, Mrs Stewart, I know you're logged in. Can you add, I don't know if actually, no, you might be on the presentation, you might not be able to. OK, no one's put any questions in there. So that, I mean, that's fantastic. <laughs> I'll give you all the information you need. If if there could someone actually just write something in the chats, because now I'm worried that it's not working. OK, what I will do then is I will close and say thank you guys for attending. Um, and if you like I said, if you do have any questions, um, please feel free to um, email in um, and I will respond to them. Um, I hope it was informative. I hope that, you know, there are they, these are positive changes that you guys are happy with. Um, and, you know, I do think it will have a huge impact on the children. Um, and they're really, really positive at the moment about um, the changes that are happening. And I suppose mostly because they could potentially with the Cubs as well, which is fantastic. Um, so have a lovely evening um, and I will hopefully see you and speak to you soon we do have parents even next week as well so if you haven't received um your emails about that you will soon be receiving them um have a lovely evening again and see you all soon bye